Hello, Bruce Fendleton here from Arbalest Media with a quick tutorial on how to incorporate SAS with Dreamweaver. I'm using Dreamweaver uh, CS5. I believe it will work with CS4. Uh, any Dreamweaver that supports uh, HTML5 should be okay. Uh, if you go to the website and uh, read the tutorial, it'll tell you how to set up Dreamweaver to work with SAS. Uh, once you got that all set up, then first thing you do is go in, create a new uh, HTML file. I'm using uh, the HTML5 two column template. I'm creating a new file for the CSS layout and click create. It's going to ask you for the uh, CSS file name. I'm just going to stick with style. Return. And there you go. Style sheet, HTML. I'm going to save the HTML and call it index. Very creative, I know. And there you go. You've got two files, index.html and style.css. And what you want to do is create a third file, and this is going to be the SAS file. So um, right click in the file area. You can't see it, but I'm going up and hitting new file. It's going to add a file. I'm going to clear that out and enter in source.scss, which is the SAS file name. Hit return, and now it's a fully editable file. I'll double click on it, opens it up, and you can see it's totally blank, just a totally new uh, file, and you can see the CSS document. So uh, do the setup. Dreamweaver knows exactly how to open it and edit it and highlight the text and do the indents and all that good stuff. So I'm going to go in here and choose the style sheet and I'm going to select everything and copy it. And go back to the SAS source file, select all that and paste over it. So now the uh, SAS source file and the style.css are exactly the same. I'm going to save this and then I'm going to go start SAS. So I'm down in the directory where the source files are, uh, the project files, and you can see them there. And uh, to start SAS you just type SAS and I want to monitor on a continuous basis any changes to the source file. So you do a dash dash watch, give the source file name, which in our case is source.scss, colon, and then give it the output file name, and this is the file that it's going to write to uh, with any changes in the source after it's done interpreting and producing uh, CSS style information. So then that's just style.css. And now uh, any change we make to the style sheet needs to be done in uh, the source file, not the, not the style.css, because that's going to be continuously overwritten as we make changes to the source file. Uh, you'll see this pop up, uh, which this file has been modified outside of Dreamweaver. Do you want to reload it? And you can tell that it's talking about the style.css. So SAS has already overwritten the old file. And just click yes we'll get back to that and so now uh, everything everything that's in here is in your SAS file so here's some content class content information I'm going to go in here and if I get rid of all that and save that file now SAS has already gone out and overwritten this file, but Dreamweaver doesn't know that. So you have to kind of fake it out by switching to another program and switching back to Dreamweaver and you'll get this prompt again. Uh, there may be a better way to do that. I don't know what it is. I just know that this way works. So you hit yes and there it's gone. Just like in the source file it's gone. So if I undo that and
put that back in, save the file, go back to my HTML file, and do the switcheroo again. I get the prompt, hit yes, and there it is. It's back. So that's essentially what you're doing uh, as far as any changes that you want to make. So if you're doing any SAS uh, source coding, uh, that's what you'll need to do. You need to save it in the source file, go back to the HTML file, switch programs, and click on yes for the um, for it to update the actual style.css file. So speaking of SAS, let's uh, do a quickie right here. Show you a little bit of what SAS can actually do for you. And you can tell that it doesn't quite like that, doesn't know what to do with that uh, bracket being outside of where it needs to be. Now I'm going to mess it up even more by taking out the element reference here. And normally that would just say all ULs and OLs apply these to it. But in this case, because it's part of the uh, content class within that bracket, it's going to actually produce uh, what we had seen before. If you look at it here, you see the dot content ul and dot content ol, but you don't see that here. So once I save it, go back over here, do the switcheroo, hit yes. Now we go back and look, that's what it did. It automatically widened that out or expanded that to include the proper CSS rather than the more uh, succinct and, I mean, much more readable um, SAS syntax. So that's just a quickie. Um, go ahead, do your own SAS programming. Remember to save your source, uh, do the switch, hit yes to the uh, dialog, and you should be good to go. Anyway, hope to talk to you again soon. See ya.